Hello everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is the video where I tell you that no, you are not in fact crazy. There is a reason that you cannot get your videos to look like a genuine motion picture. And it's probably not that you are a terrible visual storyteller. Fun fact about yours truly, towards the end of my studies at the Orms Cape Town School of Photography, I decided to specialize in color grading. For a while, I actually got to train under some pretty incredible professional colorists, including the guy who color graded the dailies for all of these TV shows. For a while, I did practice in that capacity, and I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to collaborate on numerous really gorgeous projects, including lifestyle videos, fashion ads, and short films. As I gained more confidence and experience in other areas of video production, I found that I just enjoyed all aspects of video creation too much to limit myself to one niche portion of the post-production workflow. However, color grading still does hold a very special place in my heart, and it is probably the area of video creation that I know the most about. I think at this point, you're probably like, but you're a girl. What does this have to do with the premise of this video? As it turns out, colorists actually have a very unique perspective on the limitations of certain video files and what works and why certain things look good and other things don't because our entire job is about pushing the boundaries of what is possible with luminance and color. In other words, we have the inside scoop on some technical information that many newbie video creators may not have access to yet. And these digital imaging principles explain why their videos don't look like a Hollywood production, regardless of what they do in post. Buckle your seatbelts, guys. I'm pretty sure I'm about to blow your minds. That's assuming that you don't know this already. If you do, then prepare for a nice little refresher. The first reason why your videos don't look like a movie is because of dynamic range. Dynamic range is a term that describes the ratio between the darkest and brightest parts of an image. It is measured in stops. Cameras that can capture more stops are said to have a higher dynamic range. This means that they can retain more detail in both the brightest and darkest parts of an image because they are able to record all of the necessary information to do so. A Canon 5D Mark III, for example, can capture 11 stops of dynamic range. A red weapon, however, can capture up to 16.5 stops. Neither of these compared to the human eye, however, which is estimated to perceive the equivalent of 20 stops of dynamic range. This is the main reason why the images you get out of camera never look as good as what your eye can see. Cameras are simply incapable of simultaneously capturing the same amount of detail in the shadows and the highlights that our eyes are able to. This issue is exaggerated further if you are a DSLR video shooter. Most DSLRs shoot in high contrast, very saturated picture profiles that result in what we call clipped highlights that are harsh and blown out and crushed shadows that basically look like solid, detailless black voids. Video clips with a low dynamic range are harder to color grade because there is less information to work with and no room in the image for pushing the exposure or the color in interesting directions. The second reason why your videos don't look like a movie is because of color spaces. Colors can be defined and discussed in terms of three primary values. Hue, meaning what color is it? Is it red? Is it blue? Is it green? Saturation, meaning the intensity and richness of the color. And lightness, meaning how bright or how dark the color is. A color space then is a standard that determines how much of the full spectrum of color and luminance values can be captured on a device like a camera or displayed on a device like a screen. Color spaces not only define how many shades of color can exist in a video clip, but also how saturated or light and dark those colors can be. The borders and contents of different color spaces are referred to as gamuts. We describe gamuts as being wide or narrow. An example of a narrow gamut is the one defining the Rec. 709 color space. If you look at this image of the Rec. 709 color space, you can see that its gamut, illustrated by the black line triangle, is small compared to the full map of colors, and that it especially does not extend very far into the green hues. As it turns out, Rec. 709 can only display about 36% of the physiologically perceived colors in human vision. The vast majority of display devices and entry-level cameras and even prosumer hybrid photo video cameras use Rec. 709 as their color space. 
What you see on screen now is the Canon Cinema Gamut. This gamut is available on their premium cinema cameras like the C500. It is so wide that in some directions it extends beyond the range of colors that most devices today can display. You might be wondering what the benefit to this is. Video recorded in larger color spaces captures more colors and greater possible luminance and saturation values for those colors. This means you have more options to work with in post. Larger color spaces can also be converted into smaller ones. However, smaller ones cannot be expanded into larger ones. This is because they literally do not contain the information required to do so. And that means that your delivery options are extremely limited if you shoot in some Something like Rec 709. The third reason why your videos don't look like a movie is because of gamma curves. Gamma curves are complicated. To explain them very simply, they are a manner of storing color and luminance information, and they will be one of the things that will determine how an image looks in terms of contrast and saturation. Color spaces like Rec. 709 and the Canon Cinema Gamut will have different gamma curves. Gamma curves can either be linear or non-linear in nature. A video clip with a non-linear gamma curve will have more information retained in its highlights and shadows. Such footage has often been shot in what we refer to as a logarithmic or log profile. On screen is a simplified version of a linear gamma curve compared to a logarithmic one. In the case of the log curve, you can see that the shadows to the left of the image have been lifted to preserve the darkest parts of the image while the highlights on the right of the image have been lowered to preserve the details in the brightest parts of the image. This harkens back to what I was referring to when I mentioned dynamic range and how video clips with a higher dynamic range have more room for pushing exposure and color. This is because video shot with a non-linear logarithmic gamma curve has more dynamic range and therefore is more malleable when it comes to color correcting and creative grading in post. The Rec. 709 color space does not have a completely linear gamma curve, however it is substantially more linear than the gamma curves of C-log or S-log or F-log or any of the other proprietary logarithmic profiles created by different camera manufacturers. This lack of dynamic range due to a linear gamma curve is another reason why your videos don't look like a Hollywood level production and probably another reason why you've been struggling to achieve certain looks in post. The fourth reason why your videos don't look like a movie is because of bit depth. Cameras, as you are probably aware, capture video footage as digital files. These files are comprised of pieces of data called bits. Something else that you are probably aware of is that the color of each pixel in an image is determined by mixing together differing amounts of the hues red, green, and blue. Bit depth, therefore, refers to the number of bits of data made available to record the three different color channels, red, green, and blue, for every single pixel. The most common bit depth in video is 8-bit. 8-bit video makes 8 bits of data storage available for every color channel. This means that there is a possible variation of 256 shades per color channel. The resulting combination of the 256 possible shades of red, green, and blue means that there is a total of 16,777,216 possible colors that can exist in a video recorded as an 8-bit file. If you really think about it, that's not a lot of colors. 10-bit is another bit depth that you are most likely to encounter. It contains 1,024 possible shade values per channel, and therefore a whopping 1,073,741,824 possible colors that can exist in a 10-bit image. Most DSLRs and even many mirrorless cameras cannot record anything other than 8-bit internally because they simply do not have the processing power to deal with the amount of information contained in a 10-bit video file. This is the reason that your 8-bit video footage degrades so quickly when you are trying to push an extreme color look or fix issues with exposure or color casts in post. The icing on the color cake and the final reason why your videos do not look like a movie is because of this little old thing called color sampling. Digital video is stored as separate luma or light components and 
chroma or color components. It is stored in this manner so that it can be compressed in order to reduce the amount of information that needs to be transmitted. This compression involves reducing the resolution of the chroma or color components in respect to the resolution of the luma or light components. This compression process is called color sampling. The reason we compress the chroma components rather than the luma components is because of the physiology of eyesight. The human eye is significantly more sensitive to light detail than color detail because we have about 20 times more light sensitive cells in our eyes than we do color sensitive cells. These color sampling options are expressed as ratios such as 444 or 422, with the first number representing the luma components and the other two representing the chroma components. 444 is completely uncompressed, whereas 422 is full res luma accompanied by chroma components that have been reduced in resolution by half. Canon DSLRs, for example, shoot with a 420 sample size. This means that the luma is still full res, but the chroma components have been reduced by half, both vertically and horizontally. Color sampling along with dynamic range, color space, gamma curve, and bit depth will determine the degree to which any video clip will cooperate with you when you get into post and you're trying to color correct or grade it. What does this ultimately mean for us videographers? Are we doomed? Firstly, I think it must be somewhat of a relief to find out that it probably isn't entirely your fault that you can't get your videos to look like a film. Hollywood cinematographers are most likely shooting uncompressed 12-bit RAW files in log in a much wider color gamut and with at least five more stops of dynamic range than what you're working with. Naturally, their videos are going to just look incredible. Secondly, you should also know that there is hope. The mind-boggling tech in pro-level cine cameras always trickles down to the lower tiers eventually. It's already started, in fact, with most mirrorless cameras these days being able to support logarithmic gamma curves and, if you are willing to invest in an external monitor, the ability to output a 10-bit signal. If you're willing to sacrifice other features that we've become accustomed to, like autofocus, you could even invest in something like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which has a huge variety of incredible raw shooting options that will dramatically improve your options when you get into post and you want to start color grading. And for those of us who are stuck with DSLRs and more entry-level cameras for now, I think we need to switch our mindsets from being one of let's fix it in post to being one of let's get it as right in camera as possible. Perhaps the fix it and post mentality can be forgiven in an environment where your footage actually permits for such retrospective adjustments, but for the vast majority of us, we do not have the luxury of taking such liberties because of the limitations of the tech that we are working with. Subscribe if you would like to see more color grading videos. Oh, and did you know you can request videos of that nature right down in the comments below. I do read every single comment, so I promise that I will not miss a single video suggestion that you leave down there. As always, I hope that you feel smarter after watching this video than you did before you clicked on it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, cheers.